you know, like, because everybody in LA, like, there's like four OBGYNs that, like, everybody goes to. And, like, <laughs> you're like, doesn't that bug you that he's like on the Kardashians? I'm like, no, no. Dude. You think, you think Chris Jenner would fuck around with those kids' pussies? <laughs> Absolutely not. It's like the best of the best. you now yeah I can hear you oh great can you hear me I can hear you oh my god what a relief hi hi you you really April fooled yourself in what way what how you fooled did I you yeah (laughs) what did I do you forgot that you were moving into a house oh my god always but like by the way is that this is this this is the second move I've forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's, it's now we're, now we're at a point where we're like, we have to, it's not about forgetting. Right. You know, like busy, like we gotta, we have to, we gotta get real with ourselves. Um, gotta unpack that. Um, I mean, no pun intended. Not, no pun intended. <laughs> it's also like not that difficult to unpack, I think is the truth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, we all, we've all been here, guys. We've all been, we've all been paying attention. I think, I think, I think. <laughs> Who hasn't and forgotten listen. that they were moving into a house? <laughs> well, you know, listen, we, I, it, all I'm saying is that like, we're here. I'm here. I'm doing it. I do appreciate that Birdie, did I tell you what Birdie said? No. What did Birdie say? Classic fucking bird. Birdie's like. I'm not, I can't, I can't handle this again. So uh, you just set up my room and make it look perfect. And then I'll, I'll come over. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Honestly, it's such a fucking respect. I have like, it's, I'm so, I have such respect for the child (laughs) because I'm just like, I'm like, truly. Yes. Yes. Queen. A hundred percent. Why in God's name do you want to do this again? Like <laughs> when I worked for Dave then. Letterman, he like I- I've said this many times in many places. My first job, I interviewed at NBC, and, but I was hired to work on the new CBS show. All of that transpired between like him moving networks. All transpired between my interview and when I started work there. And so my first job was to pack up his office, which I've often said, and bring everything over to the Ed Sullivan Theater. What I haven't said, and I hope he doesn't mind me saying this because I always had respect for it, is that I didn't just put all of the stuff from his old office in his new office. I asked him, are there things that you want, things you don't want? And he said, "Uh, all I want is um, my wallet. (laughs) Because whatever, if something happens at at this place, I just want to pick up my wallet, put it in my pocket and walk out. (laughs) (laughs) Well, listen. And I was like, I get it. I mean, that that's, I get it. I I feel that. And I have to say the three years that I was there, not a lot more than his wallet went, went into that office. Um, well, good for him. Good, <laughs> good for Dave. He was living a real uh, minimalist, a, a real minimalist think, yeah. office life. But um, yeah, that's well, what I thought you were going to say. Birdie doesn't. Birdie doesn't have any idea how minimalist their life has become <laughs> because they didn't also think through the if you if you ask your parent to do a thing, right? You have no you have no say over yeah. how or it gets done. Yeah. So, you know, so there's been a, a great deal of items that are now <laughs> no longer <laughs> with Birdie. Yeah. We sh- I mean, we should be clear, everyone, mm-hmm. friends, this is a bonus episode of the podcast. <gasps> That oh my we're, gosh, it's an emergency episode. It's an emergency episode. It's an, emer- it's an emergency packing episode. <laughs> that we are doing, and we were going to record. We were all set to record it yesterday. Yesterday. And then Busy texted me, and she was like, 
hey, guess what? I forgot. I, f- I forgot that I had something to do. And I was like, oh, what? And it was that she's moving into her house. So, yeah. So busy right now, currently. Last week, we had some sound issues over a bad microphone cord. You guys. What happened? I don't know what's, I didn't know about it. We didn't know about it because of like how we were recording in person. And like, because like when we first started this endeavor, the plan was that we were both going to live in the same state and go to this office and record (laughs) easy peasy. Oh, thank you. Into their setup. (laughs) And right. um, what actually happened is we live across the country from each other and we do all of the, we try to do all of the sound engineering ourselves. But last week, these these recorders that we record with are notoriously fragile. They break a lot. And so last week, I don't Wait, know. Hold on one second. I got this. I'm good in here. Okay. Because I'm going to do my podcast while I'm unpacking. It's fine. It's just, it's just the way that we have to do things these days. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay. okay. Yeah. So busy's. <laughs> anyway, we had sound issues Meanwhile, last everyone, week. Everyone, everyone thinks I'm a lunatic. I just yeah, want you I to mean, know. I'm sure that that's the. It's, it's fine. It's so consensus. Friends, you have loved an experimental episode in the past. This week, we're trying to record. It's and, no different. And we're like talking on, you know, uh, we're using phones instead of computers and we're using this n- new recorder and busy. I also want to say like, I just have my eyes glued to this little red light on this recorder. So it's not that well, I don't because... want to make eye contact with you. It's yeah. that. No, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you to to continue to just make sure that that <laughs> works <laughs> because how bummed was I when that, that failed? Yeah. To I, work? I mean, it's, it's failed a million we, of times and we've well, been like, well, when did it fail? And, and then we have to we like, can't. we don't know. We don't we know. We literally and, don't know. Cause um, we're just, we're, we're just, I mean, truly when we say we're doing our best in this respect, this is, Oh my God. I said that yesterday to cricket in a, in a bid for her to give me a fucking break about (laughs) something. (laughs) You know what I mean? I was like, Cricket, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm trying. I'm doing my best. And Cricket was like, Hey, you're doing your best. This isn't your podcast. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, wait. Oh boy. Okay. Well, yeah. All right. All right. Okay. 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 Yeah. It's Fair hard. Enough. It's hard. It's hard out there. It's hard out there. But I have to say, I felt like people were, oh, first of all. Always take the banana t-shirt Busy just found from our merch. Hey, by the way, right now on bravegowns.com shop mm-hmm. busy. There's like a little um there's a little sale going on. What like everybody's favorite crew neck of the moment is 20% off and everything else is 10% off with the code BPIDHB, the show's initials. So if you haven't been to Brave Gowns in a while, there's all new stuff that you all voted on in our Facebook group and picked which stuff we were gonna sell. So AKA my mom voted on. <laughs> Did your mom's votes get picked? I probably. I mean, my mom is very active, as you say. Yes, yeah, she group. is. I just wondered if because I mean, it wasn't unanimous, but it was pretty nearly unanimous. So, I just wondered if your mom mentioned if she was with with the majority or she hasn't yet. But you can be sure that she will now. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, yeah. So we're just doing this like rigged up um, scraps. We're using scraps to record this podcast. Busy's in her new house. And like, who knows where your equipment even is, where your official equipment even could be. Um, it's at Casa Kismet. Oh, at Casa Kismet. We okay. know this. Oh, yeah, good, good. But also, you know, supposedly because my machines are just like all broken. Right. Here's what's not easy. I'm just going to, let me just say this. Relatable? I don't know. (laughs) Honestly, who knows at this point? Maybe the time 
for your assistant of four years to move on to his own creative pursuits and to make his own dreams come true isn't when you're um, finally moving into your house. Although, to be fair, there's never a good time, I guess. Yeah, I was going to say, he saw you through a lot of moves. I guess he could have basically rationalized, like, how do we know that this is the last? (laughs) And he wouldn't be wrong, because I think if I'm going to be real. Yeah. It's been a lot of moves. I know, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like. I don't think I, I don't know. I've like th- going back to LA last week, two weeks for two weeks sort of made me feel a bit like I'm not maybe long for <laughs> New York. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It was just like, it was just, so good to be yeah. with you and uh Emily and Jenny and Sarah and Abdi and Simran and guys these are just the people that I had time to see yeah like I had like I it's my it's literally my entire life yeah my entire life yeah it's everybody that is like all of my friends for millions of years all live yeah. in the same place. And here in New York, no shade, I have my beloved Michelle. <laughs> but she's very busy. She has like a little one and. Oh, that was, I was it. That was it. I was just going to, that was, I was stopping. <laughs> that was it. I was, you know how I, <laughs> I had listed all those other people. This is. Like there I have, I mean, here I have Michelle, uh, I have a friend. Yeah. I have a, I have a friend who you're right. He's like in a very busy in deep with a little baby, a little, little one plus a, a a grown Mm -hmm. child who requires a lot of It's crazy. How big Matilda is like, we were talking about that today. I was just like, Oh my God. Cause Bernie made me watch a uh, movie last night that I really disliked, but also I had been moving all day, and I was. It was probably not the moment for me to be a good audience. Do you right, know what I mean? But right, sure. But I'm pretty sure that movie wasn't good. But uh, <laughs> it was like some movie from the '90s, and you know, Brody's like very into queer cinema, right? You know, and so like it's some indie movie, like some British indie movie from the '90s. It's like about a boy who's gay and he like has this relationship with like the jock, you know, who is like in the closet and like the whole thing was like, it felt so old fashioned and like kind of like homophobic the way that they were like talking, which if anybody is like, you know what I mean? Like if you've ever like watched something from, well, guys, even friends, yeah. sometimes you're like, whoa, what the fuck? Like, why are they talking about gay people like that? You right. know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. I mean, listen, almost almost like, everything well, we consumed from that era, I think, that we were like, didn't think a thing of it, and now we're horrified. I know, but like, what was so, the, what was so weird is that like, Birdie is obviously the woke, but they were just like, I think they got fooled by the British accents and thinking it was like very deep. It's very, a British accent will fool you. It will fool I know. you. This is what I'm saying. And that, but I was like, obviously, because I'm, you know, so smart. <laughs> and for, you were able to <laughs> 42. see it. Yeah. I was like, Ugh. I was like, Bertie, this is like actually terrible like this is like a movie that does not hold up and then Bertie got mad at me of course because oh. that was r- rude of me to say yucked. but they're yum but back to the British accent thing when I worked for mm-hmm. Graham Norton it was an mm-hmm. interesting study because um Graham Norton is very 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 funny but sometimes mm-hmm. um 
he would say like, oh, this will be good enough to things that I thought that we needed to like punch up or whatever, um, that in my mm-hmm. experience that would need to be punched up just to like hold water on stage in sure. a show. And, um, he was right. It never did. And I always chalked it up to the adorable accent and that things just seem a million times smarter, funnier, um, yes. well thought out when it's, yes. it's in a, a great accent. A hundred percent. Yeah. Well, anyway, we didn't get along <laughs> about that. <laughs> oh no. Well, I'm sorry to but hear you know what? We're that. Okay now. We're okay. It's okay. We we can't, we overcame it. <laughs> we got over it. And I stayed up and watched it, even though I really did not want to. You tried. Um, I tried, but I did drink maybe too much wine to get through it. And ew, this box is like full of cat hair. Oh, not my, that was your cat laying in that for a bed? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. It's not great. This is why I really, yeah, I, I really don't let an animal on my bed because I feel like I know people are, think it's so wrong, but I just really hate rolling over into a face full of pet hair. Gina doesn't shed. That's good. I'll cuddle that little fucker all day long (laughs) Um, in my bed, which I did this morning. And she is, I have to say, getting back to town, seeing that little Gina Bobina was like such a delight. Like, she's so cute and cozy. Uh, She's really excited to see us. That's good. me. Let's be real. (laughs) <laughs> Gina wound up being your dog. Gina's fully my dog. <laughs> everybody, everybody knows. That. Everybody knows. Um, so you said you had lots to tell me. What? Tell me what's going on. What's happening? Casey, I'm moving into a new house. I know. It's nuts. <laughs> it's insane. A new house that you're already like, not sure I'm going to stay. No, oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen. Here's where we're at. And I just like, I'm going to be, you know, whatever. I I have no reason to not be. From coming. Yeah. Frunk. I, I think that I. I feel so grateful to have had to have this job, you yeah. know, on Girls 5 Eva. Yeah. And the Lord knows what would have been if, if not for that job. Right. And like, but, but, and I, and I think, and I think that in the moment that we moved East, uh, that was the best thing for really both my kids, but especially Birdie, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I know for sure, for sure, it's not the best thing for me, you know? Right, right. It's not, it's not, it's not for her. It's, right. I'm not with my friends. I don't have, you know, like, right. So I, so I, I think that I was like very gung ho, like, I'm, we're going to live here forever. Right. But I definitely once, once I went back, and now that I'm like sort of thinking about things and also like the pandemic is still obviously happening and whatever. I who but, fucking knows what's yeah, happening. But we we know what our lives are more than we did then. A little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. And so I feel like I can safely say, like, I don't I don't think probably this is like the rest of my life. Yeah. If I may <laughs> offer you a couple of things, which is that yeah, you're such a, a social person. In my mm. experience, it's not as easy to be social in New York City. I don't know why, because it does seem like everybody's just out walking around town. And but I don't know why. What makes it more difficult to be social? And I think like my final years on the East Coast were surrounded with me having a job with really strange hours that also precluded me from being social in a lot of ways. And Mm -hmm, I was commuting mm -hmm. like 
a thousand hours a week. Um, so that also cuts into your social time. But even like when I wasn't working, people just aren't as social. Like they just don't go out and hang out as much. And it's so much easier here in Los Angeles to do that. I don't, again, I don't, I can't offer an explanation for why. So I think that if you're a really social person to take that hit to your social life, is probably, you know, especially someone that just relishes having friends as much as you do. And like having not just like one or two good friends, but you really like to have like a large circle of friends that you really, really spend time with. So I can't imagine how difficult that must be. Also, like you do have a an amazing job, but it doesn't take, it's not year round. So then when the job well, but is. But here's the thing, but here's the thing. And yeah. this is the, this is the, this is the trick. This is the trick of this particular dr- job. Like I'm really hopeful and like knock wood. Where's wood? Hold on, knock wood. <laughs> I'm really hopeful, like, and feel pretty good that the show is going to go at least one more year. Yeah. But the shooting schedule on Girls 5 Eva is such that <laughs> it literally shoots in the middle of the school year. Right. And I cannot, I just can't, like, be away from my children, um, but busy. Birdie is, <laughs> you're letting Birdie apply to boarding school. Yes, but that's different. Because that's their request, something that they feel really strongly about. And I want to help them see if that's the thing that will make them feel good in their education. Right. Um, anyway, but there was no version where I could like basically live in LA and work here while doing the show. Right. Because right. it's just to like it's in the middle of the school year right. and it would be I wouldn't get to see my children right right and like I just am, I just can't do that it's not for me I can't I can't like yeah also I would be like I can't even imagine the exhaustion of like trying to like go back and forth or right I, I don't know right. it just doesn't it doesn't make any sense to me but then when you're not working and you have time then I'm mm-hmm. sure you know that's where traveling and like being like, oh, is this my town? When you're working, you probably don't even feel what town you're living in, I would think. Like you could be in any town because you're just pretty right. much working and doing family stuff. But then when the job, yeah. you know, so here, here's what we know, like Girls 5 Eva, I hope it goes on for so mm-hmm. many seasons, but no yeah, TV same. show lasts 5 Eva. So, you know, so you well, know no. that. And, and we know this, right. And also, um, you know, we also know that there will be a time when your kids are grown, you know, and, and you're just like, whatever you decide to do will be more your own decision. I never thought True, that, right? but like it happens. It's so cliche. It they tell you it happens, happens in a like, second. And it really does. And you I never know. believe I it, know. but it really does. But it, and it really does. Yeah. But right now you just have to do what you have to do. And that involves doing a podcast while you unpack your child's bedroom and people measure the doorways <laughs> <laughs> behind you. <laughs> because Birdie is like, I am not <laughs> dealing with this shit again. Oh my God. Um, it's also like, this is, I mean, <laughs> talk about like... This house is so nice. Like, <laughs> like you know me. Like, I like feel like this is probably like one of the nicest houses I've ever seen in New York City. Oh, nice. You know what I mean? Oh no. I mean, I'm just being honest. Like, yeah. you know me. I'm like a, whatever. My home is very important to me. There's no space for anything, Casey. Oh no. Yeah. It's like, I mean, it's like you would have needed to go to Brooklyn for that and like moved tried. into a factory. Well, that's, I mean, yes, we did try. I mean, I did try, like I did look, but Brooklyn was very expensive too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hi. Wait, hold on. Let me look. Sure. Oops. Um, busy hung up and she's gonna have to call back. 
because she touched her AirPod and um, I am still recording. Uh, guys, here's what I know. I know that our next partner has a product that I use literally every day. And I started using Athletic Greens because it was sent to us <laughs> to try out to see if we wanted them to advertise on our podcast. And we continue to use Athletic Greens, both Casey and her literally entire family and me, because I love the way it makes me feel. It helps my digestion. I just kind of feel like, honestly, when I'm doing my Athletic Greens on the regular, well, it helps me stay regular. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's true. I put it in my smoothies every day. Um, and it gives me everything that I could get in a multivitamin. It's just one scoop of AG1. It tastes amazing. I'm not kidding. Like, I'm not usually <laughs> a fan of I don't know, like things that you mix into smoothies. I, they just generally taste like chemically or something to me. AG1 never tastes chemically. Um, it's lifestyle friendly, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, gluten free, contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything, still tastes delish. It's cheaper than getting all different kinds of supplements in one because you're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance. Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews and AG1 is a small micro habit with big benefits. It's one thing you do every single day to take great care of yourself. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially because we're still now heading into another, as Casey said in the pod today, new variant staring at us. Darn it. Anyway, one scoop in a cup of water every day. I'm going to go do mine right now, actually. That's it. No need for a million pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash busy. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash busy to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Listen, guys, if you are waiting for the right time to buy your first home, I've got news for you. Things are only getting crazier. You know I've been moving all this week, and I'm so grateful that we got in to our house, our new home, when we got in. Rents and housing prices are skyrocketing, interest rates going up. No matter what stage you're in, you need to start planning now, which is why we recommend everyone listen to the How to Buy a Home podcast. This is an incredible free resource with everything you need to know to navigate the process. Host David Sidoni is an industry expert with years of experience who actually cares about first-time home buyers just like you. He answers questions like, when's the best time to start? How do I even start? Will a mortgage be more than my current monthly rent? The answer, probably not. I know for us personally in New York, we were shocked to find out how expensive rent was and how difficult the rental process was in New York versus just straight up buying. That's why we decided to do it. Truly. Good news. He just released an emergency episode of How to Buy a Home all about the bidding wars of 2022 with insider tips and tricks to win. Come on. Listen to How to Buy a Home podcast today. David will help you. Find How to Buy a Home wherever you listen to podcasts. She's back. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I think, um, who knows? Who knows? Look at these weird Harry style socks that I Oh, just those are, oh, those are cute. cute. Yeah. Did you listen to the new Harry song? Did you watch the, uh, the uh, new video? No, I saw pictures of <gasps> them, but... Oh, the video is so good. 
Um, I'm I'll probably I'll probably watch it if it like comes before me. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna look for it, but if it like winds oh, really? up in my timeline, I'll watch Why? it. Why? I don't know. I just like you'll have to. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) no, no shade to Harry. He's just like, and I'm not even when I say he's not for me, I don't mean like, ew, he's not for me. I mean, like he's for other people and I'm like happy with what I already have, you know? Sure. (laughs) (laughs) Why not? I'm sure that this is like a symptom of um, fatigue. No, no, I don't think it's that. I'm sure it's like a symptom of some like undiagnosed psychological something that I'm just like, oh, there. I only like like this small universe of artists. It's not that I only like that. It's just that that's enough for me. I'm not looking to go outside of that neighborhood. I don't, you know what? I feel like I'm fine with all of it. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like I'm fine with anyone needing anything in any way. I, I, all I'm saying is that's fine. (laughs) <laughs> I, I get it. I always, I always get it when something is like not for her, you know, like, yeah. because so rarely are things for everyone. Exactly. But I do, but I do, I do have to say, I really do. You I love it. Songs. I really like it. I really like it a lot. Yeah. I really like him. Um, and so I think oh, I, like, yeah, I really like him. Yeah. I, think I like he seems actually like the best crying egg. when I was, listen, I was emotion last night and Aww. moving was it's been hard you know yeah. I'm like <sighs> deep breath because uh everything's hard yeah things are hard yeah yeah and uh it's been a, an interesting time yeah and yeah and like so then Bertie and I were like watching Bernie showed it to me last night and then I like just started like sobbing and Bernie's like thought it was really cute I was like oh my god you love Harry so much and I was like okay sure um <laughs> it can be it can be about that sure sure okay sure um <laughs> um I do want to say like I I was feeling really protective of you last week not even last week earlier this week when we did the episode cuz you shared the story about like going to see Olivia Rodrigo and mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. how there you know there was like a situation there and how it was handled mm-hmm. and how you were feeling about it and I was just feeling mm-hmm. really protective of you because I know that you were just like saying it you know you were just saying like this is what it is or whatever Mm -hmm. and I just really didn't want I didn't want people to like come at you and have like judgment or whatever (laughs) no I mean no I was gonna Uh, listen I'm not I never here's the thing I you do track that stuff and occasionally like I love it like Casey will send me like a like a thing that's like just so you know if this person like these and I'm like oh I don't I mean I forgot I was moving into this house like I can't (laughs) I'm not I am like at this point I'm so far behind on like stuff that I've like committed to do like I don't even know what is happening like I'm but I if people did come for me then I mean that's at this point like you know (laughs) I I especially with the with like you know Bernie's like sort of like neurodivergent um, ness is that a term? That's probably not a it term. Is but now. you know, it is now. But like with bird, bird being you know neurodivergent and like handling these things differently and like learning how to parent in that in that way. Yeah. Like I I do feel like there's a part of me that's like like I, I, like it's so funny. Like I remember when I first started. Cougar Town, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Mom shame. And I think they still do this, but like mom shame was like all the rage for reporters to ask me about. Like, yeah. what do you think about mom shaming? And like, do you, what do you, what do you say to the mom shamers? And like, blah, 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 mom shame. I was like, guys, I don't know. Ask better questions. Like, who fuck it? Like, why are we stop? To just stop talking about it. Stop giving it space like it, right I, it, it doesn't it doesn't exist to me right it doesn't the shame does not the shame does not exist right from other mothers it only exists from within my inside my own own head right um but I was gonna say well, that uh, nobody I mean nobody not only did do I think like nobody who listened to the podcast had anything 
other than supportive to say, I think a lot of parents and family members of, uh, of kids and folks that have similar issues that you were describing, even similar issues Mm -hmm. themselves just wrote to say like, Oh my gosh, did I understand that? And it really hit home for me. And that's the same thing I'm going through. So I think it was really good. I just, you know, I know that like, well, you mentioned last week, like that person on the airplane who was like texting Mm -hmm. or whatever. And that does that thing. It kind of gets to me. I just, you know, no matter, obviously. Well, you're protective of me because you're my friend, but I guess, and I'm protective of my kid. You know, like I, that's the thing that like, I don't give a fuck about what people might or like say about me at this point or think about me or whatever. But like, yeah, I mean, birdie as they will say to anyone who asks, didn't ask for this. (laughs) (laughs) Right. So, right. So to me, it's like that I do need to like be aware and be as protective of bird as I can, like, which, you know, varies. I I feel like I do better at it sometimes. and, And then sometimes I don't do as great just because I'm just purely from being in the public severe, severe, sphere, the severe sphere, the severe sphere of the public world in which we live. Well, I think that's what makes it tricky, right? Because you're like, you know, this could be any kid could be having something like that. But then because mm-hmm. you're with that kid, it makes people mm-hmm. maybe take a little more notice or be able to like assign some type of opinion to like a person or a family and, sure. you know, run with it, whatever they, whatever they think is, you know, gross to do or whatever. But then it's also like, I know, you know, I know you and I know that you probably want to tell people like, hey, you're not alone because you don't want to feel certainly alone in, I don't know. It's just tricky because there's no like, as much as there's no handbook to navigate any of this shit, there's definitely no handbook to navigate a thing that you're going through that like people might form an opinion on and put out there. Judge you for. Judge, yeah. yeah, Or like, or photograph or you know whatever people mag it send it to people mag. (laughs) i don't know you know you just never know so i'm always really i i'm protective of you and all kids by the way not just bird but like any kid i would be like no we're not doing that here's what we're not doing that i know i mean it is weird It, it does feel sometimes like so wild to me like that like I I hadn't been you're gonna die when I say this next sentence and guys I already apologize I apologize in advance <laughs> I had I hadn't been in a grocery store <laughs> in a really long time and I think because in New York like you just don't like it, it's just so much easier to get somebody else to like just bring the groceries to you. It's so fucking hard to grocery shop here. Yeah. And because you have so to in, drag yeah. a thousand bags home in like a I weird know. wire I mean, cart. I remember what happened when I remember when I bought that cart and when Ray was like, absolutely not, grandma. And then I like we got into a fight about it. Um <laughs> shaming me for my cart. He he cart uh, shamed you. He cart shamed me. And see, I've held on to it. I still am like, I can't use the cart. Busy, when we were looking for an apartment in Brooklyn, we looked at this one apartment and the realtor could not wait to show us. It was a very nice apartment. It had a beautiful view. It was on the small side, but it had a beautiful view. But the realtor couldn't wait to show us this system that they had rigged up No, so that you could... It was like a pulley (laughs) out of the window down to the street so you could um, haul your groceries up through the kitchen window. And I was like, absolutely not. But then... Wait, I think I told you about the realtor lady when we were looking at houses who was like, and this has a garbage disposal. And the one thing that I really want to make sure that you take away today is that there's a garbage disposal. And I was like... (laughs) what is wrong with this lady? Why does she keep bringing it up? But then we had to move into that temporary place that didn't have the garbage disposal. And remember, 
I was so bummed. Yeah. So. I don't even, I think garbage disposals might be illegal in New York City. They're not illegal. They're oh, not illegal. They're just up. uncommon. They're, they're uncommon because it was that like a, in a lot of like high rise buildings yeah. and things, it Every, was like everyone can't tricky to have send their them. garbage down the drain. Right. But people also, I think, are, are, you know, historically speaking, are idiots. And so they end up like trying to, yeah, like put like chicken bones and then like they cause like a huge plumbing yeah. problem yeah. or whatever. Um or grind up the bones of their neighbor. We don't know. Yeah, uh, who knows? Uh, My who husband knows? has uh, such strict rules for the garbage disposal of like what can't he, go down. As well he should. He's, I mean, it's a lot, Biz. It's a lot. And like everybody is terrified to use the garbage disposal in front of him. Matt, honey, I know you're listening and I'm sorry, but your rules about the garbage disposal, you're right. But everyone right. is like, well, what can I put down here? Ice. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's about I'm with it. Matt. I'm actually with Matt on that one. No peels. I mean, no bones. No nothing. Yeah, no peels, no bones. No, no. Nothing no fatty. Peels, no uh-uh. No. <laughs> for sure nothing fatty. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, it's pretty funny to me just how totally wildly different it is to yeah. live here. <laughs> yes. And so you don't, you haven't been in a grocery store. And so that was like a fun okay. thing for you while you were here. Yes, it was fun, but I'm bringing it back. I'm bringing it back to the task at hand. to the <laughs> thing we're talking about. Um, but I saw so many celebrity children on the cover of like magazines in the grocery store. And oh. I was like, what the fuck is happening guys? Like I truly was a little shook by it. And like, it just has been a minute since I've again, been a minute since I've been in a grocery store. And since I've seen like the mags, the rags, and it was like really shocking to me and made me upset. So I appreciate your concern slash support. Also probably why I could never do real housewives. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm teasing. Like, there's a million reasons. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think we, if you listen to this podcast, and you know like 90% of them. <laughs> yeah, it takes a certain, it takes a certain type of person. But yeah, that always, that I always had a question about that. And like, I'm sure there are arguments for and against, but I always felt kind of weird about how, um, how the kids were so integrated into the housewives show and like, okay, mm-hmm. they're your kids and you know, and, and sure, sure. it's your real life. And so you're showing that and that's how it goes. But then, you know, at some point it becomes their choice, right? Whether or not they want to mm-hmm. um, continue on with the show. I think one of Teresa Judice's daughters, I loved her because yes. even from a really young age, she never went on the show. She would like show her face once in a while. And I think she was kind of shy. I think it was her choice, like since she was really little. But anyway, my point about like, you know, at some point you make a choice whether or not you want to be on the show. But then I'm like, if you've been brought up in the show, like, are you able to make that choice or does it se- just seem like what you're supposed to do, you know? Well, I mean, ask my kids about Instagram. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I I, take full responsibility for that fucking mess. Like, I, I personally didn't, you know, there's a lot, a lot of things. I had my kids before fucking most of these assholes out here had their kids. Right. You know what I mean? And, and like, in, in terms of, like, in terms of the age that I am, like, a generation I am, and my usage of social media, right? Right. So, like, I feel like a lot of people in the public eye that are similar in age to me yeah had children a little bit later than i did i feel right like. right yes same cuz birdie's like i mean not michelle obviously but michelle <laughs> michelle doesn't even have like a working computer i'm not kidding um <laughs> <laughs> 
It's like always my favorite thing. Just like how Michelle will call me and be like, Dizzy, did you know? And will tell me something that like broke four weeks ago. Right, like, yeah, right. Babe. And now I'm, I'm sorry I didn't think to call and tell you. Um. So anyway, yeah. So I, yeah. So like we, I had social media and like, it didn't seem, we've talked about this. I, we don't need to get into it. Yeah. This whole thing again, but like, yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's hard if you're like, something is the norm and then you are come of an age where your parents or whatever, they're like, and then now you get to decide right. what your relationship to that thing is, you know? Right. Right. And I think that people go, but that's like life guys. That's yeah. li- that's, that's anything. everything in life when you're, when you are a person, like your parents raise you a certain way. If they're good parents, you will get to an age where they're like, and now it's time for you to use the critical thinking skills that we have taught <laughs> you and decide how you feel about politics, right. how you feel about these issues, how you feel about social media. And like, hopefully, you know, my kids aren't, you know, it does seem like they've got <laughs> very strong opinions on things. Right. You know? So I'm sorry I overexposed them a bit, but like, listen, a lot of, all of the things would have been all of the things anyway. So. Right. (laughs) Right. That's what it is. It is. And I'm not saying it is what it is like in a. Well, we all have, we all have uh, regrets. We all have regrets. My biggest regret, I, I'm sure I've told it on this podcast, but I did not let my son Eli, I didn't not let him, but I encouraged him not to dress like a witch one Halloween because I, I remember I just didn't want him, people saying stuff to him Baby all night him. because I knew that that would have frustrated him and ruined his, his mm. fun, you know, but I feel mm. like it was very wrong and I should have, maybe he'll dress as a witch this year at age Probably not. 23. But... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but have you guys talked about it, though? Uh, yeah, we have a little bit. He's like... He's... I think he was like, I barely remember that or whatever, but... Yeah, I mean, yeah. it feels to me like a thing that's probably not really on his radar, but... Um, yeah. <laughs> but I get it. Like, I get that thing. Like... Yeah. You you know, you there are certain things that, like you hang on to and your kids are like, wait, what? I don't remember that at all. And then there are things that you don't remember that your children are like, oh yeah, no, I'm holding on to that until I die. (laughs) It's the only thing that I needed you to do differently. Right. Totally fucked it up. Oh gosh. So you know what I mean? Yeah. There are those. Yeah. Well, maybe not with your kids. They seem so like they like you so much now. (laughs) But maybe my kids will get there. I don't know. I think, yeah, I mean, please, like, I, I don't ever mean to make it sound like we didn't have any <laughs> difficult times when those kids were growing up. But I was just telling, I was telling someone on a cameo, I think, because they were like, what's your best? Ooh, how's cameo going? Cameo's going pretty well, I think. Um, yeah, it's so nice. It's su- I, I think people are basically using it as like a little teeny bit of unqualified therapy that's cheaper than I a copay. It. You know what I mean? It is. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> which I'm totally Supportive. here for as long as you know that uh-huh. I'm not a I'm an unlicensed and not a professional. But somebody was asking me like what's the best tip for just handling like two little ones that are like close in age and very active. And Mm. so I said, and I said, this is like when my kids talk about their happiest memory of their childhood, Mm. this is usually it. I would just let them do whatever. I would like take them to an enclosed area, like a corral, like an enclosed corral of like a (laughs) playground or whatever, Uh where I could see everywhere. Let Uh them do whatever, run around, scream, climb things, get as dirty as possible. And I don't love dirt, by the way, but I would always be the mom that would let them get exhausted when the sun set, literally when the sun set, I would like be like, it's time to go. It's getting dark. Mm -hmm. Put towels down in their car seats, Mm -hmm. buckle them in their car seats. There we go. Get them inside the house with like the towels wrapped in around them to like encase the dirt Mm -hmm. and then I would like grab something some things out of the fridge microwave it while they were standing there in their towels Mm -hmm. get them upstairs 
have them disrobe onto those towels, put their dirty clothes right into a laundry basket, then put them in the tub, open up my laptop, sure. put on a movie, okay. and then give uh-huh. them their dinner in the bathtub. <laughs> Oh my God, that's a genius. That's just like my tip for getting through every day if you have little kids. Mm -hmm. Like it requires a lot of planning and a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of moving parts. But if you can like really use logic and plan it out so that the kids are never unattended while they're covered with mud or while they're in the bathtub, feed your kids dinner in the bathtub while they're naked watching Scooby-Doo on your laptop and they will... If they're anything like my kids, they'll remember it into their 20s. Can I tell you, though, that is legit how Ileana handled both of my children. (laughs) So (laughs) I'm not kidding you. This is like, this is actually like I would come home from work and Cricket would be in the bathtub watching Bubble Guppies with a bowl of mac and cheese. (laughs) And I... I like, I truly learned from the best (laughs) and, (laughs) and I would, I followed suit. Like I would definitely, definitely do that. Like with my kids when I was not working and had to take care of them also. Cause like, I don't know how many of my friends out there who are listening were like, are, are, if you're like a stay at home parent or a parent that like usually is working, but then like gets like a random day off or whatever. And you're like, I'm going to do all this stuff with the kids. And then you get there and you're like, what am I supposed to do with these children? (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Like, what is the, like, I've had, I had that experience a few times with my kids where I'm like, wait, 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 what do I do with these? What do I do? (laughs) They seem fun, but like, how do I? Oh my God. What am I supposed to do with these? like tiny people, you know? Yeah. But you got to let them lead the way. You got to let them lead the way. One time my son, I had this like, I don't know. We just had like a day alone together in Massachusetts when we were like visiting my mom. And so Mm -hmm. I had planned this whole big day to like take him to this zoo, this petting, like not a zoo, but like a, like a farm. Um, Mm -hmm. Take him to this farm <laughs> that he loved, and I planned it all out, and yeah. was like so ready to do it. And then as we were walking to Wait, the hold car, on one yeah, sure. Sorry, will you bring me? I might need like I need like a handful of hangers for Birdie from wherever. I don't know. Ask Tracy. I have no fucking idea where anything is. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That was Mark. Ladies and gentlemen, that was fun. Okay, so so continue. Sorry. No, it's okay. So I had like planned this big trip to this petting farm that uh, he loved and like just planned everything out to have like the most perfect like mommy kid day. And then as Mm -hmm. we were like walking out to the car, he just um, was like, can we not like, can we just take a couple minutes? Cause I just want to gather up rocks and drop them down this storm drain. Mm-hmm. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay. And then uh, we really just spent the whole day dropping little rocks down a storm drain and we skipped the farm. And I was like, you know what? That's, that's fine. too." <laughs> I was like worked you know up what? for a little while that like this thing that I planned. That's out. what I was about to say. Yeah. You, uh, that is the ability to not feel crushed. Yeah. Like that, I go, I, historically speaking, that has been my parental, and I won't say failure, but failure, you know, is like not being able to not, to like roll with the punches when like the plan changes or the kid doesn't want to do my arts and crafts like bonanza right. that I have planned. <laughs> right. And instead is like, wait, I just want to like watch Peter Pan with you. And I'm like, nah! <laughs> like, I'm the one that like then throws this fucking bit because I had like this expectation that like we were going to do a thing that I deemed more worthy. Right. Because I was like, it's creative or it's whatever like you don't want to pick up rocks you're gonna take the kid to the farm and you're gonna have an experience and learn about animals and like I don't whatever and then you're just picking up rocks like it's for me where I would always lose the thread with my kids is that like my expectation was that I needed to do something that was like somehow 
fulfilling or better right. than what they normally do right. because I like rarely got a chance to where did you go? Oh, there you go. <laughs> I rarely got a chance to like spend that kind of time with them when right. I was working. So right. then I like had I like built up all this stuff and then it could be tricky for me. I think I had an epiphany when um <laughs> when <laughs> Like, because I am big on, like, if you make a commitment to someone or if you say Mm -hmm. that you'll be there, you should be there. And it's really important. And if you say that you're going to do something, it's really important to do that thing. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I get, like, a a teeny little bit hung up. And maybe I would get, like, a teeny little bit hung up with my kids. But first I had to, like, realize, like, they're kids. And so, like, those adult rules that, like, I apply to myself don't really apply here but also then when I realized like consensual bailing is so fun like when two people are supposed to do something together (laughs) and you like mutually decide to bail on it it's very the most fun it's it's like very exhilarating and then I was like it's so satisfying yeah I can mutually bail on things with my kids too and it's like and it's just like like a real inside thing that you can just enjoy together yeah yes but then there is the thing where it's like you're not mutually bailing the kid is like your plan sucks (laughs) You don't know me, you know, like, right, you right. Don't know, you don't know me at all, right? What's wrong with you? Why would you even think that was fun? But, I hate arts and crafts, <laughs> but good for you yeah. for like going, you know, for going with it. I did last night, and I'm not even kidding, I had to drink like almost a whole bottle of wine <laughs> to finish that horrible movie. It was so lame. I don't even want to say the name of it because someone listening is going to be like, that was my that favorite, was my favorite movie. movie. And it was amazing, but I'm telling you, it does not hold up to whatever you think it is. It actually, like, I had to look it up today because I was like, what the fuck? And it has, like, kind of a weirdly good score online. Okay. But I'm telling you, it has to be one of these things where it, like, just doesn't hold up. Yeah. You know, like, we're, like, in the, in, at the time, it maybe felt, like, very progressive yeah and now it's like embarrassing yeah that's rough yeah that's rough you have these little temporary paper shades up which are also kind of rough oh and they are they like they have like binder clips holding (laughs) yeah it's kind of (laughs) hilarious it's like a little bit making me laugh but we had to we had to put up a temporary paper shade because my dog one of my dogs just like barks you know like our whole back wall is like all windows and so Mm -hmm. she just has this one lower window that she stands at and focuses on barking out of and so we were like let's just put up a shade so that she can like you know just to give her her own life back because when you're obsessively doing something that doesn't feel good Mm -hmm. and um you know we just wanted to give her back her time and her her (laughs) Her She's pe- reclaiming her, her time. peace of mind. Yeah. <laughs> so we put we put up one of those temporary shades, but now she literally just stands and like barks into the air. Like oh boy. At least before she could pretend like she was looking at something and barking at it, but now she just like stands and like barks into the open air of our house. So it turns out she just oh has God. a passion for barking. Yeah. Well, it seems that way. <laughs> she just loves it. It's what she does. She loves to bark. Um, speaking of what Gina got a bath, but I haven't seen her because she's not here because she's staying at Casa Kisna, Aww. you know, until yeah. things are like moved in. Like I can't, yeah. I don't want her to be you stressed. You don't want her to be stressed. She's moved a lot no, too. She, yeah, she has. And she's, she really is working hard yeah. at her stress levels these yeah. days. So. We had um, real shit to talk about last week, but you know, um, not, I keep saying last week and it wasn't last week. This it just week, earlier feels week. like earlier this week. So we didn't even talk about like what we're doing our best at. We didn't talk about blah, blah, blah. But like last week when we were on spring break and we took an episode off, I just decided for fun to do a Zoom like I was like, let's paint our nails on Zoom or whatever. Yeah, I I saw that. During the time that the podcast would have come out, whatever, because I had like free time. And I really thought like only like 10 people would do it because I figured everybody would be working. Because it was so fun. Everyone missed you. But it was like somebody uh, Zoomed in from like an appointment, getting their hair done. People stayed up until three in the morning in Australia to join 
and a bunch of people like were it, it like reached the maximum amount on Zoom and then people sat in the waiting room waiting for someone to drop oh out so that it was really fun and it was like true to podcast form it was like 3 hours Okay, that's hilarious. <laughs> so we're gonna <laughs> so have to insane. do it again another time, so that people who could enjoy oh God, that be, time. Yeah, I would. Well, I would love to do that. Yeah, yeah. When I, you're... My, my nail, my nails are um, back to the natural, and they're totally unpainted, and they're just, especially because we're moving, they're just like yeah. falling off at the seams. Yeah, you had to take off your of all the the nail of all the like paint I've been like, or not paint like um. Tape. Like the boxes I've been like opening open. tape. Yeah. 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 Ripping open tape. That's exactly what I was trying to say. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. You can't you can't have a good manicure, but we'll do one, we'll do a nice one some other time uh, over Zoom. But it was really fun and it was really sweet. And um our friend Marcella Kroll joined for a little while. Great. I love this. It was nice. It was super fun. <sighs> Very special. It felt like um, um it felt like early <laughs> pandemic resourcefulness vibes. <laughs> well, you know what I think? What? I think that's definitely you shine in those moments. Aww. Like being resourceful and like being creative in that, you know? That's very nice. I just felt it's like true, though. I just felt like, you know. It's fun to hang out sometimes. <laughs> it's fun to say hey and like I, we're like staring down the barrel of another fucking covid variant and they're like D- it's not that big a deal but it still can kill you and I'm like oh my god heavens. I went to one thing the other night and I saw a tons of our friends. Um Oh really? Where? We went to do you know Cynthia Dupree Sweeney? I do not. Okay, so she is a friend of a, a lot of friends of yours. She's a friend of mine. She's an author, a New York Times best-selling fiction author, and she Ooh. has a book out called Good Company that um, mm-hmm. she did a reading at a bookstore, and then we went back to her house for cake. And um, oh, so, I love cake. yes, it was. Well, that's what I'm laughing at because my husband Matt came, but also our friends Paul F. Tompkins. And uh, his spouse, Janie Haddad Tompkins, who have been on this show, were there. And um, we literally situated ourselves in the house so that we could see the second that the cake was cut. <laughs> I've never heard uh, four adults talk more about cake in my in my life. Um, and then, yeah, but there were lots of lots of friends that you would have recognized there, I think. And I would have brought you as my date if you had been in town. Well, I wish I had been because <laughs> I don't love it here. Oh, um, and you know who I saw there? Your friend Maria <laughs> Thayer and my friend Maria oh, Thayer. But I love Maria, how's she doing? She looked so good. She looked so beautiful and looked so good and um, seemed like she was doing so great. And she said that she listens to the podcast all the time. So, um, Maria Thayer, we love you. And it was so great we to see you. you. I got a little oh, emotional God, I because I hadn't seen her in so long. And like, mm. like Paul and Janie, I have seen, you know, over this time a couple times. And so, but seeing something, someone that I hadn't seen in so long made me like a little choked up. Is that a what is difficult? That? What? Drilling some drilling. Holes to oh, put it some, actually, yeah. it just it didn't sound that bad. It's not. It doesn't. Okay, it good. didn't sound that bad. Please, everyone, know busy has been unpacking and putting stuff away this entire time. <laughs> I have no choice. I got to keep working. You got to keep gotta working. Keep, I got to keep powering through. I actually think I came up with a really good solution in Bernie's room. It's going to look nice for exactly two and a half seconds, but that's okay. <laughs> like <laughs> we just have to accept that. Yeah. Our children's bedrooms are going to be messy. Oh, blue land, blue land. I love you so much. Um, Guys, did you know that an estimated 5 billion plastic hand soap and cleaning bottles are thrown away every year? That's disgusting. That's disgusting. That's the opposite of what you hope happens with keeping your hands and house clean. 
Listen, if that's not bad enough, each bottle can be made of more than 90% water. It's a lose-lose situation for the planet, people. It's 2022. Stop wasting water and throwing out more plastic. Get Blue Land's revolutionary refill cleaning kit instead. Sometimes in order to go green, you got to get blue. Blue Land, that is. Single-use plastic is so early aughts, guys. It's 2022. Blue Land's idea is simple and beautiful. You buy the bottle once, refill it forever. No more plastic waste. The only thing you discard is your outdated idea that eco-friendly cleaning products are more expensive and less effective. I'm telling you, these bottles are gorgeous. You fill them with warm water. You pop in one of the hand soap or spray cleaner tablets. Within minutes, you have powerful cleaning products in, honestly, delicious scents. Iris agave, perine lemon, lavender eucalyptus. That's my favorite. From their best-selling clean essentials kit to their hand soap duo and plastic-free laundry and dishwasher tablets, Blue Land has something for every inch of your home. And backed by very popular demand is Blue Land's toilet tablet cleaner, which I have in my bathroom as we speak. Get it before it sells out again. Right now, you can get 20% off your first order when you go to blueland.com slash best. That's 20% off your first order of any Blue Land products at blueland.com slash best. Blueland.com slash best. Oh, Helix Sleep. Oh, Helix Sleep. Oh, oh, Helix Sleep. We love Helix Sleep. We love it because, listen, you've been tossing and turning all night. It's not just the state of the world, I promise. It's probably because your mattress is terrible and you need a new one. You guys, you know that we love Helix. We love Helix mattresses. And I'm so excited to be reunited with mine in my new home. As soon as my bed gets delivered, it's on back order. But the mattress is just waiting patiently. Um, Helix Sleep makes the best mattresses because they know that everybody's different. So you take a quiz and it's just two minutes. It matches your body type and sleep preference to the perfect mattress for you. I always thought I needed a firmer mattress. Turns out I need a little bit of a softer mattress because of the way that I like to sleep. And now that I've switched, sleeping through the night like a baby. Everybody's unique. They have soft, medium, firm mattresses that are great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. And even a Helix Plus mattress for plus-size folks. If you're looking for a mattress, take the quiz. Order the mattress you're matched to. The mattress comes right to your door ship for free. You don't even have to go to a mattress store. Who wants to go to a mattress store? And But I will say they have a 10-year warranty And you get to try it out for 100 nights for free. And they will pick it up from you if you don't love it. But you will. I promise. So Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash best. That's helixsleep.com slash best. Okay, so we saw... Uh, Mark's writing partner, Abby, and her husband, Jason, have two kids. I've known them. I wrote about them in my book. Well, maybe I didn't write about Hugo in my book. Sorry, Hugo. But I wrote about Phoebe um, because Phoebe was, like, born right around when Mark and I started dating. And I felt like Phoebe was, like, the first time... Like Mark was very pretty, pretty adamant about maybe about not wanting to have kids, you yeah. know. Yeah. And, uh, and then Phoebe was born, and then oh no, I'm gonna cry. Oh. Aww. <laughs> and um, and he just fell in love with her, and Aww. she's just she's the most amazing kid. You know, she's 16 now. Yeah. And uh, she's on her way to Ireland to compete in the nationals for 
Irish dance because, oh, wow. you know, she's like, nas- she's internationally ranked. Uh, it's like, is she the only non Irish Jewish Irish <laughs> dancer who's internationally ranked? Probably. I don't know. Probably, maybe. Not Irish at all. No, no Irish in there. Oh, interesting. In their, in their family. Interesting. Just when she was little, she was really great at gymnastics, like amazing at gymnastics. She's little. She's like a little spark plug and was so good at gymnastics, like the kind where, you know this because you were kind of like this too, like the kind where the gym is then like, um, okay, so we're going to need Phoebe to come every single day <laughs> and, and then we're going to like train her for competition and to compete, Right. all this stuff. And like, she was into it, but it wasn't like her love, you know right, what I mean? Right. And then her grandpa is was very into Irish things, even though they have no Irish, like maybe like a past life thing. I don't, I don't who know. Who knows? But like very, who knows? But like, was it's what is it called? It's not a francophile because that's a oh ugh, French an right? Irish file. Whatever. He's an Irish file. So he took her, she was like, I think she was like five or six, six maybe, took her to this like Irish day or something. Okay. And she saw the ladies doing the Irish dance and she was like, I want to do that. That's what I want to do. And so he was like, I love that Phoebe. I will find the place for you. And he like found Cleary Irish Dance School in Los Angeles and she started going and like instantly it was like this exa- was exactly what she was supposed to do with her oh, abilities interesting and like i mean she was on what was the steve harvey show kids got talent or something oh oh yeah remember yeah. yes i mean she's like been on lots of tv shows dancing i feel like she was on the ellen on ellen sure er, if, if you're a kid who dances you're definitely going to be on ellen at least once sure Exactly. This is what I'm saying. The, the kid is like, but she's, but it's not just that she's, she's like gifted, like great at it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And so they're going to Ireland. But anyway, that wasn't my story until I started crying. Uh, my story was like that we saw Phoebe and her little brother in Los Angeles and like, our kids who basically like they were all like babies together, you know? Yeah. And then as you, you know how this is too, because you, my children, you know, as like you get older and like the kids have their things and their things you have to go to and whatever, like the schedules, you don't see that you're like, you don't see certain kids as much, especially like because our kids weren't the same age. They were all like similar ages. Right. But, like, Phoebe's two years older than Birdie, right? Right. And then Hugo, I think, is exactly two years older than Cricket. So so then, like, we kind of just, like, be, even before the pandemic, like, hadn't been hanging out with them as much as yeah. maybe before, you know? Yeah. But it, so it's so great, though, because now, like, Phoebe and Birdie are, like, both teenagers. Yeah. Again. So it's, like, they're, like, on the same level yeah you know like yeah. kind of and they just were like thick as thieves immediately it's like my favorite thing ever when kids do that thing like where they just reconnect immediately with some yeah kid you know what I mean yeah why did I bring up Phoebe though I thought I had like a particular reason to bring up what, was, what were we talking about I know we were <laughs> just talking about I don't know. I don't know. But I, I do want to say it's we love to learn things on this podcast. A hibernophile is a person who is fond of Irish culture, Irish language, and Ireland in general. Its antonym is hibernophobe. The word originates from hibernia, the word used by the ancient Romans to refer to Ireland. Genius. All right. I've Hibern- never, literally Hibernium. never heard the word Hibern- hibernophile. hibernophile. Yeah. Hibernophile. I've never heard it either. Yeah. Anyway, Phoebe's grandfather, sweetest man, hibernophile. <laughs> <laughs> and now Phoebe's en route to Ireland. Oh, COVID. Were we talking about COVID? Oh, probably. Maybe. Probably. 
Who knows? I don't remember. Casey, I don't remember. I'm not doing my best at that. <laughs> I'm really not. I'm not doing my best at remembering anything. I'm like, I have a friend who's really feeling like he's suffering from long COVID, which I believe he is. Yeah. But also I have not had COVID and I too am exhausted all the time and can't remember shit. Yeah. So like I... And the but but you can't really say that. Like sometimes people are like, but that's don't take my thing. You know what I mean? Right. And I, I, I and I feel that deeply. Yeah. Look at this balcony. How nice is this? There's oh, a balcony. It's so nice. A new balcony. Balcony time. You, that's a must. And look, that's for... the backyard down there. You oh, see? okay. Nice. I mean, it, I know it needs some work. Yeah, I haven't. Well, I haven't seen any of this yet. So I'm. Oh, do you want to go on a house tour? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Sure, sure. Because it's been like you've been working on what it. What was and- I going to say? Oh, shit. You know what we have to talk about? What? The knee situation. Yeah. What's happening? Oh, my God. Casey. Casey. All right. So I went to get my eyebrows done. Okay. And this is how every story about me starts. The obviously. eyebrow situation. Uh huh. And Christy Stryker, who we love, who I want to say this is as responsible for the aesthetic of modern women right now as the Kardashians. There, I'm going to say it. Okay. She's the one that started the feathered, bushy brow. Okay. And she popularized it because literally every actress and singer in the world sees her. Yeah. And she and, and she led us. And all it was down like this. her and she's led us down this bushy eyebrow path. Yeah. Which I'm grateful for because I love it. But yeah. she's just a genius. And I just and she's the sweetest woman. Um and she works with her sisters, and I think that's cool. My point being, she's a visionary. She is yeah. a visionary. Um, and we hadn't seen each other in a while. And again, of course, because I live here now. And I love her. And so, and I was like, she just like kind of fit me in at the end of her day, you know? So it wasn't yeah. like, she, she didn't have anyone after me. This salon was closing. And so then we were just kind of chatting. And catching up with what was going on with her and like me and my life and blah, 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 like just everything. Yeah. And then I was like, I don't even know why I brought it up, but I guess it has been sort of weighing on me. And I was like, and then there's this whole like knee surgery situation. And she's like, wait, what? What are you talking about? I was like, oh, well, da, 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 da. I told her the whole thing and blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, you know that my husband is like the head of orthopedic surgery at Cedars. Oh, wow. And I was like, I did not know that. Huh. And she's like, yeah, Dr. David Golden. And I was like, oh my God, wild. And she's like, well, so what did the, like the doctor that you went to in New York, like the second opinion, what did they say? And I was like, like, I didn't, I didn't get a second opinion. I just like went back to my doctor for a second time. Yeah. <laughs> And she was, like, busy. I, I don't know. A ton, I'm the wife of a doctor. Like, I don't know a ton about But I do know that you have to get a second opinion. Do you right. want to see my bathtub? Yeah. That was my real splurge. Yeah. First of all, first of all. Oh, yay. There she is. Hello Potty is back. There's something gross in it that's not. That's That looks like construction stuff. That's not from me. But okay. I'm not a fan of that necessarily. <laughs> Um, and then my bathtub. Oh, wow. She's pretty. Isn't nice. she pretty? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to get those kinds of shades that go down up so I can like look out and then look, there's my seashell chandelier Aww. that I had, um, made for my very first house when I was like in my twenties, because I really wanted, I had this idea that I really wanted a chandelier with like little capiz shells and you couldn't find one anywhere. And then I found 
Sarah Schneider and I found this lady in Florida and she fabricated it for us and made it for me and oh, like nice. sent it to Los Angeles. And then literally like six months later, it was, they were at anthropology and everybody had all them. the rage. And listen, I'm not saying that I started the trend, but I am just saying that I, that has like been, that's a theme in my life Yes, where I like have an idea of a thing I want. You can't get it anywhere. I figure out how to get it done. And then it almost immediately is, is able to be purchased and is just like, you know, 75% less than what I paid for yes. it because I feel like, like you and I are both market. a bunch of faith popcorns. Isn't she like the faith popcorn <laughs> is like the trend predictor person does that sound that is, does this I, sound familiar no, I love, at all no i, I love it though i, I could love be it. I love so drunk faith faith popcorn, popcorn okay. is a futurist author and founder and now. ceo of marketing consulting firm brain reserve i think like you and i are kind of faith popcorn like in that same thing mm-hmm. i you know how you can get collapsible silicone everything now for your kitchen like containers funnels yeah baking yeah i just bought i've just bought a ton Swear to God, swear to God, I was like, in the 1990s, I was like, all of these things should be made of collapsible silicone. And Matt was like, that sounds wild. How would that ever happen? And I'm like, should have gone right to a manufacturer that second. Also, one time he laughed at me when I told him, I think we're going to be able to use the internet on our TVs one day. (laughs) And he was like, LOL, silly. (laughs) No, you showed him with that one. I mean, I didn't really. I, I And I'm sure a lot of people pre-predicted these. But Summer, who makes our merch, was just sending me like a bunch of stuff saying like you and Busy like really pre-nailed a bunch of trends that I'm seeing in clothing now. Oh, first of all, Grandma Moot should be getting a cut from every <laughs> goddamn designer out there because... That fucking granny squares are it. Like everybody's got a granny square every fucking place they can put a granny square. At That's this point. right. I want to show you something now that is insane. Okay. First of all, this is again what I want to say to you. We, this house is fucking gorge. We did such beautiful work to like make it our own. The people had owned it literally since the year I was born. Wow. It was so cute. Yeah. Felt kismity. Uh, and, and, and this is about, I mean, stretched thin doesn't even begin to describe how expensive, you know, like it's like not, and I'm not trying to be like, I just, just like, this is the top of my budget ever, ever, ever. This is beyond the top of my budget for right. any housing, housing situation ever. Yeah. And it's like, is a joke in comparison to Los Angeles. Like right. an actual weird joke, like size-wise, what you can get oh, yeah. in LA. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to show you what my the current state of my bedroom is. Yeah. Um. Oh my gosh. I know this is a podcast, so maybe we should describe to people what this is. Just, it's like- It a, should be a bedroom. Yeah. But but it's like it's a, cl- not. a lot of clothing racks and it's the basically just, the whole room is just taken up with clothing racks and no bed clothing racks. no bed that i can see well that got delayed because you know <laughs> shipping container issues or whatever what are they right. called what is it called yeah what shipping called? containers yes no but what was it supply was chain it? supply chain issues yeah supply chain issues to so the bed isn't here thank god for wow other beds that did show up but like yeah. So needless to see, you're gonna have to gonna have to have a fire sale, like yeah. on clothing. Yeah, I you're mean, also gonna have to like, get like storage or something. I don't know. Or do I just like? I mean, it's, I didn't even show you this side of the room. Yeah. Because listen, it's, it's not, New York. Everybody just wears like black pants a black jacket and they have their sturdy black shoes that they walk around in and, uh, and then they put their groceries in the oven. They don't cook anything. It's not for me. It's not for me. (laughs) That's not for me. Uh, You know, I'm already looking. I can see some clothes that can go. I can see, I can see some. Also, 
here's another thing that we need to discuss. I feel like people will relate to. I mean, oh, because I have to get back to the whole knee story. Yeah. I mean, I've gained a, a fair amount of weight recently, like in the last, in this past almost year. Yeah. Definitely eight months. Yeah. Yeah. And so you have stuff that's not fitting you. So the question, right. So the question is, but like that, but that being said, like I always have been a firm believer in like, don't keep clothes that don't fit you because by the time they fit you again, you're not going to want them. But like, I don't know if that's necessarily true in this moment, just because I like basically gained weight because I've been super fucking depressed and couldn't really work out. Right. Because of my knee thing. Right. I feel a bit like, I don't know if I'll ever be as skinny as I was skinny or fit or whatever you want to say. I, guys, I'm using bad language. I'm sorry if this is a trigger for anyone. Yeah. We should put a trigger, okay. please, because I don't want like people to like, I, cause I actually don't have an eating disorder. Like, I mean, I'm as disordered as any actor. Right. Is. Right. Is that fair enough to say? Yeah. This or is just a hard like, thing to talk about. Yeah. I'm just trying to like not be, I know I have friends who've like, you know, been in hospitals and stuff. And I just don't want like anyone to feel that I'm being like, but the truth is it really is hard when your body changes and you feel like it's like outside of. And so I'm just trying to figure it all out. I'm just trying to figure out like what I should hold on to or what I should let go of. Well, you, I mean, what you just said is about more than clothes, right? Just trying to figure out what you should hold on to and what you should let go of. And that's like all we're doing every day, right? It's all we're that's doing. All I've been doing. Yeah. It's all we're doing every day. And it's really hard because I also know that you've had regrets about things that you've let let go of. And to be clear, we're close. <laughs> Yes, to be clear, clothes. Um, but I also, like truly like we're not even like talking about like metaphorically speaking. Like I literally have had regrets about clothes. That I've literally tried to get clothes back that you got rid of. <laughs> well, I have actually, like a Brady before, Bunch like, things, episode. Well, no, I like sent stuff to you know because I do like the Poshmark sales or yes. whatever, and I have like legit like reached out to the Poshmark people have been like, I am going to, sorry, I'm going to need that back. Like I can't, I actually can't sell it. But <laughs> also, like like a whole back. <laughs> but also sometimes like we burden ourselves by holding on to things, right. That just, it's fucking tiring. Right. Oh my God. There's my busy tonight dress from the Oprah phone call. Oh, Belongs in the Smithsonian. In the Smithsonian. <laughs> it does or something. Does. Something. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, like there's so much wisdom in like what Marie Kondo says about like if things bring you I don't I don't even think just joy. I think like you have to simplify it for for audiences and stuff. But I think like if something holds something for you versus something not holding anything for you anymore and how it's mm-hmm. good to let it go just to free up well space, right? Like you were just saying, there's not a lot of space there and to free up like psychic space as well. So you just don't have to see it, you know? So what if there's space in Los Angeles? <laughs> well, now you're talking, you know who you need to talk to? My son, Eli yeah. busy because he has been visiting all types of office spaces and storage spaces because you know you know his job he works with yeah. our friend who works with us here on the podcast Amanda and um so he that's his job job um which he loves but on the oh side God, by the way I think they're advertising today but I really wish Bev was up in this new house right now. <laughs> you need some Bev. I brought I you a, a whole Bev. bunch in mm-hmm. LA and I feel so bad because you don't have access to, it's probably an Emily Beebe's refrigerator I right mean, now. I pretty much drank them all oh, good, when good. I was there. Oh, but, good. Yeah. So I you mean, probably, Emily still I have, did, but... probably still have some in floating around inside you, I hope. Well, I probably still have some, yeah, wine floating around <laughs> inside me from last night. <laughs> my viewing of that terrible movie. Oh my God. Eli has been... Um, 
restoring vintage furniture, he and his brother are trying to start like a side business of like Great. restoring and selling vintage furniture. <laughs> but he's going to look at all these storage spaces in like, um, in, but he's been looking in office buildings a lot because they're like renting out offices to basically do whatever you want. And so he, he's been like down in Long Beach looking in all these spaces where he's like, can I stack a lot of furniture in here? And can I like bring prospective buyers? And everyone's like, yeah, I don't give a shit what you do. <laughs> so maybe... You feel a little stupid that I didn't get a, that I didn't get a two-bedroom Casa Kismet. Yeah. Because I could have turned one of of those bedrooms into a closet. Yeah. And now I feel like I signed a multiple year lease because I, I actually feel like even if we end up moving back to LA, like I'll keep Casa Kismet because of the, 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 uh, rent. I mean, if, you know, things yeah. in business world are, are cooking. Yeah. Oh God, what is wrong with me? <laughs> Mark and I are so different. He prefers hotels every single time. I would much rather just go home. Yeah. I hate, I do not like staying in hotels. Like I, I don't know. It's not for, I mean, I like it when it's like a resort and you're at a resort, but yeah. other than that, I'm like, no, give me a, give me my home. Give me a couch that I know. Yeah. Give me like, I do some cat hair on my sweaters. I'm good. <laughs> um, wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait. Yeah, I need some. We definitely, I definitely need help. But I do see. I'm like, as I'm like, I am looking around. I do see a lot of things that can I can let go of. I do see a lot of things that I can't though. I have an idea of what we should do. We should take all of your stuff, make a capsule mm -hmm. wardrobe of sure. like. We'll give you up sure. to thirty items. That's yeah, not enough. But okay, we'll take uh -huh. your. All of your stuff, we'll put yes. it into storage. Uh huh. And then after an amount of time, say like two months, mm -hmm. I will administer a quiz. Oh my God. I know it all by heart. <laughs> you know that, you know that, you know the joke. Like you can ask, you can actually ask Tracy, who's my, who's my like organizer, who's yeah. here helping me, obviously, because I needed mage help, but who also, uh, but who also has worked with, I've worked with her for years and years and years. Yeah. So she knows, she's like, your ability to recall like pieces of clothing that she's like, I busy, I've never, literally never seen anything like it. Like, oh my gosh. I know my clothes and my mom, and this is like a big joke between me and my mom too, because at some point my mom was like, my mom is the same way actually. Barbara is these are Birdie's clothes. I'm bringing these upstairs to their <laughs> closet. Because uh, Barbara, she, she is. She really is the same. Anyway, Barbara, at some point, like years and years and years ago, when I was like uh, in my 20s or something, yeah, I said something like, oh, I have to go. I don't have anything to wear. This, da, 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 da. My mom's like suggested something. And I was like, mom, you don't know my closet anymore. And it like crushed my mom and uh... then became like, and then it became like a joke. In, and we like say it to each other all the time. Like, yeah, you don't know my closet anymore. Yeah. It's actually kind of a genius thing to say to someone. <laughs> <laughs> that should be in so something. I th I, because yeah. I feel that one time Eli came to LA to visit us and he was wearing really nice shoes that he had like bought for himself. And I had mm -hmm. like a little bit of a, like an internal meltdown because they were that like, that's the kind of thing where back home when we were, had been living together even mm -hmm. if he had like paid for them himself, we would have had a conversation about like, oh, I bought these new shoes. And he just came here wearing these shoes that I didn't know any part of the story of. You and, didn't know about those shoes. Yeah. And I just you didn't know those shoes. Had a real mommy meltdown in that moment. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. My mom felt it. Yeah. Uh, but here we are. Oh, my sweet Bev. I really could have used a Bev while we were doing our podcast. I got to I gotta get my Bev on. I got to order more. Listen, you know I love Bev. You know we love Bev. It's important 
to support a female founded brand. They're changing the space in an industry dominated by men. Wine. And Bev is delicious. It's delicious. It comes in different varietals, four different varietals. I'm doing this all just by memory. I'm not even looking at the sheet because I love Bev so much, so much that I can just talk about it. (laughs) <laughs> my favorite is of course the rosé oh it's so good you can order their best-selling ladies variety pack and you can try all of the varietals you're gonna love it it's a can of wine it's equivalent to like a glass and a half it's perfect for when you don't want to open up a whole bottle that's the problem like i'm the only person in my home obviously that drinks rosé. I say obviously because like my children obviously aren't drinking, but, (laughs) and Mark likes whatever he likes. And some nights I'm like, I want to have a glass of wine or like a glass and a half of wine, but don't be wasteful. And I know that I like never return to those bottles I open. So Bev is perfect. Um, it's zero sugar, only three carbs, a hundred calories per serving. Bev's my favorite. It's a great gift. You know, Casey mentioned she brought me some Bev's when I was in town visiting. And they were the perfect little uh, gift for me for my <laughs> for my spring break. Um, we love Bev. Get the four packs that are great for gifting or hosting. There's Rosé, Sauve Blanc, Pinot Gris. And they have the sparkling rosé glam and glitz, which I love. And it comes in like a cute little gold, gold little can. Anyway, get two-day shipping straight to your door. Shipping's always free. I'm going to do it right now because I'm to the new house because I'm out and I need it. We've worked out a special deal, 20% off your first purchase plus free shipping on all orders. Again, try the best-selling ladies night variety packs. You can check out all of the varietals. Go to drinkbev.com slash busy or use code busy at checkout to claim the deal. That's D-R-I-N-K-B-E-V dot com slash busy. Bev can also be found at retailers nationwide, including Target, Total Wine, Bevmo, and more. True Bill. True bell, true bell. Oh my God, you guys, I can't even. I'm too tired from the move. But you know what? It's time to clean house. I've been getting rid of so much stuff as I've moved, been moving into the new house. And you know what I really want to get rid of? I'm not even kidding. I want to get rid of all the money that I'm like, have been pouring down the, no, is that the, is that it? Is that an expression? Pouring down the drain? I guess. I don't know if that's the right expression, but it's what I want to do. And Truebill is helping me do that. You know, like all those things that you sign up for, like the free trial. And then you're like, oh, after the two weeks, I have to remember to quit or whatever, to opt out so that I don't get charged monthly. I literally, this is not a joke found out from True Bill <laughs> about a monthly charge of like 70 bucks. Every month I was being charged for it and I was like, I don't even know what that is. Oh, it was some dumb thing that I signed up for so that I could read something. True Bill found it and was like, hey, hey, you don't need to do this. On average, people save up to $720 a year with True Bill because companies actually make subscriptions really hard to cancel. But Truebill makes it very simple. You link your accounts, Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. And your Truebill concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions. Oh my gosh, busy. So you don't have to. Guys, I love it. Truebill has over 2 million users, has helped save them over $100 million. Like Matthew B., who says, This is a real person, Matthew B. In a matter of seconds, I saved $660 
$100 for the year on my direct TV bill. I saved $120 for the year on my serious bill. I saved $840 a year on car insurance. That's the other thing. Sometimes these big companies like have other, like when you signed up, you were getting the best deal that was possible at the time, but then they like bundle or they do like a whole other thing. And then you're like, wait, wait, wait. If I just made like one change, I could be saving $200 a month or $200 a year or whatever. Truebill will figure it all out and let you know what the best option is. Anyway, don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at truebill.com slash best. Go right now. Truebill.com slash best. It could save you hundreds a year. Truebill.com slash best. Okay, so me story. Okay. Chrissy was like, You're out of your mind. You cannot get like a major surgery without <laughs> like without getting a second opinion. What right. are you doing? <laughs> you crazy person? And I was like, Well, yeah, I get it, but also like, you know. Yeah. Uh, whatever. I don't who's had time, you know? Right. And then She's like, well, here's what we're going to do. I'm calling my husband right now. He is going to see... It's like, it was, this was a Friday evening. She's like, he's going to see you Monday morning. You're going to get your second opinion from him. And I was like, this is could not have worked out better if I had tried. Right. You know? Least amount of work for <laughs> me. You know, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I didn't even have to make a call. She did it for me. It was genius. So I was like, oh my God, Christy, thank you so much. So go in to see her husband who's adorable and immediately liked him. Yeah. He did his own set of x-rays on me. Okay. And did his own like sort of diagnostic and examination, looked at all the information that I had given him, which was like a fair amount, you mm-hmm. know? And then, and I did not tell him what the lady wanted to do. Yeah. You know, the whatever other surgeon. And then he proceeded to give me 100% like opposite. (laughs) Really? Oh my God. Well, yeah. He was like, basically, he was like, I don't, he's like, I don't think. He's like, look, I, I don't think you should waste your time doing anything other than a partial knee replacement. And I was like, wait, what? I was not expecting this. Yeah. And he's like, it doesn't, because the whole surgery, like the surgery that she has, that, that my surgeon in New York wanted to do, I yeah. kind of explained it, didn't I? Yeah. Right. So it's like, it's like a re, it's basically like they have to reconstruct the part of my knee that's like, fucked up structurally. Oh my God. Jesus. So that, sorry, as I trip, um, <laughs> so that they can like fix the thing, the structural issue. So that like then, and then do this like cartilage transplant with like cadaver cartilage. And anyway, he was like, you just need a partial knee replacement surgery. And like, you're technically kind of like, I mean, you're definitely on the young side for it, but like, you just, that's just, you just got to do it. Like, we just know it's going to work. We know it's whatever. And I was like, oh my God. Then I told him what her sort of plan was. And he's like, huh, well, I mean, yeah, you could do that, but you're kind of too old for that. And also like, I, I don't know. He's like, that's just, I wouldn't pick that. For you. Right. <sighs> Fuck. Okay. So I have two like disparate opinions. And right. he's like, well, what do I do? Literally, he's like, well, what do I do now? And he's like, well, you got to get a third opinion. Uh, and I was like, oh my God, this is like too much work. A tiebreaker. I can't. It's a tiebreaker. But so then he sent me to this doctor. He's like, there's another doctor at Cedars. I can like get you in to see him before you leave town. Yeah. Um, he's excellent. Again, don't tell him what the recommendations have been to you so far. Let's just see what he, see what he says. It'll probably 
it'll be probably one of the two. Like the one thing that was like sort of not in question <laughs> is that money is fucked and probs need surgery like right, right. sooner rather than later. Right. Like they both were saying like, yeah, you need surgery. He just was like, I think you should do the partial knee replacement. And she was like, I think we should try to structurally like fix what's structurally wrong with her knee. And then like, see if we can do this cartilage transplant. So anyway, yeah. I go to this doctor that he got me in to see later that day. Well, first of all, he had like very cool famous people's signed pictures to him. <laughs> she made me <laughs> like, is like only in LA and also like totally always works on me. Like I am just such a sucker for like, oh my God, he did Elton John's knee replacements. Like clearly <laughs> that's who I want to go to, you know, but it's just so funny how like, I really, I don't know why, but like in surgery, I always yeah. assume. You're like, this that, is the best pizza because, you know, like when I Don Rickles picture is up on the wall. No, no, no. This is what I'm going to say to you. I don't believe it's true with anything other than surgery. Oh, only doc, only surgeons. Okay. Uh, Only like doctors and (laughs) surgeons because, because I genuinely feel like, yeah, like food is like subjective, whatever. Cause you feel like like Elton John would be like, you didn't do a good job on my knee. I will not give you a photo. (laughs) Well, maybe that, but also I feel like, I feel like the people that are like, like Elton John is like, I have all the money in the world. Right. I'm only going to the very best person. Yes. Elton John could probably buy the knees of someone who's alive to get replaced with. You're you're following, you're following my train (laughs) of thought here. So anyway, so, (laughs) so that's why I'm always like, like, like when my OBGYN years ago was like on the Kardashians, I was like, that's it. That's it. Great. Great. I'm at the right place. I'm at the right place. Like people are like, oh, I, I don't, it does not bug you that like you're, you know, like, cause everybody in LA, like there's like four OBGYNs that like everybody goes to. And like, <laughs> you're like, doesn't that bug you that he's like on the Kardashians? I'm like, no, no. Dude, you think, you think Chris Jenner would fuck around with those kids pussies? <laughs> Absolutely not. It's like the best of the best. Oh my God. When anyway. I got my tonsils out, the, surgeon was like in New York City the surgeon was like I'm I was Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis's ear nose and throat doctor and I was like yeah I mean she has passed away but not from an ear nose or throat issue but right but you know also RIP to our friend Joan but like I did go to that doctor I I remember which that that I did but I didn't know that it was that 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 was a wild situation (laughs) Like that. Yeah. And then I, that doctor, the whole thing. Yeah. I know. Yeah. But I didn't know it was. And then found out. And then was like, oh, well, that's not, we Maybe can't go not. there. Well, there you go. But it helped you make your decision based on like the celebrity story that went along with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. That's too sad. I don't want to dwell on that right now. Yeah. But so anyway, this guy is okay. like a very so well, then, he has so, so many then, autographs. Right. So then I go, yeah. I mean, Cool people, guys. Cool, cool people. <laughs> so that <laughs> not just celebs, just cool people. Just cool people. So then, I, so then I go in and I like immediately love him. Obviously, oh, yeah. John. And but he was like great too, and was like very took his time. Did like looked at all my MRI, my X rays. Like had did like a diagnostic. Like you know, it was like just really taking his time full workup <clears throat> full workup to give me this his opinion and he knew he knew that he that I was coming to him for another opinion yeah he I didn't tell him what the opinions were but he knew that that's why I was there and then he like sat in the chair kind of like across from me I was just kind of looking at me yeah and for a second and I was like yes and he's like well there is no 
perfect answer for you. <laughs> oh, no. And then what did I do? Did I you, started hysterically did you laughing oh. and crying at the same time. <laughs> and crying, both, both. Oh. I started hysterically laughing and crying at the same time. And I also decided that I'm probably going to get that tattooed on me somewhere. <laughs> or it's the name of my next book. There is no perfect answer for you. And I was like, well, sir, if you didn't just fucking sum it all up, <laughs> I don't know what I can tell you. So I'm like laughing and crying. And then I like apologize. And he legit says, oh, I was married to an actress for a long time. It's fine. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Jeez. I love him. I love him. Jeez Louise. People had some great lines to me in LA. I will say that. People write some great lines for themselves. Everyone in here is a writer. So, I give everyone's him, a writer. So I give him props. A performer. I give him props. So that for... was a, it was a great line, well delivered. Uh and then we discussed, and he basically was like, You could do this this surgery is the way I see it. You could either do this surgery the surgery the doctor in New York wanted me to do, or you could do that, this surgery, the partial knee replacement that uh, Dr. Golden had suggested. And at this point, I'm like, yeah, no, no, I know. I got it. Thank you. Um, But what do I do? And he's like, well, that's, you know, you have to decide that. Right. You have to decide that. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, what would you do? And he's like, well, that's a great question. And then he like kind of thought about it and thought about it. We like, we chatted and he like was like, I would ask, I would actually go back to, to your doctor in New York. And I would ask her like these three questions, whatever. And I was like, you know, yes. And also I think that I really need to just like meditate on it for a second and think on my own what I, what it is that I want to do. And while I'm not exactly sure yet, like I will say one thing that became very clear to me is that I don't want to have knee surgery and recover in New York. Mm. Okay. Because the thought, like, like, like you said, okay, so either way, I'm looking at like a rehab and a blah, 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 whatever, whatever. It's like the idea of like not having anyone that could come visit me except for Michelle. Right. <laughs> Who has literally a toddler and current, you know, and like no help. Yeah. Because she's not like working a job right now. So, you know, Michelle's not a person that like has a ton of. Yeah. She can't come and Nannies and, and stuff. Like she's. Yeah. Yeah. She's like got a lot. Yeah. So anyway, like, I don't know. Like it, it just became very clear to me while I was there that like. I think that being around my friends is really important. And if I'm going to recover from a surgery, I think being around my friends and being in sunshine is would probably help. very important to would, me. Yeah. Would help. So, so I do know that. Yeah. Which seems like progress. Yeah. That seems like progress. And I think like, well, like all medical things, you know, because I mean, like our last big medical thing was, um, you know, knock on wood, everything that's been going really well for my son after his like seizure Bless. issue, but like talking to this really amazing neurologist that you and our friend Simran and another friend of mine helped connect us with, um, is that, you know, he left a lot of choices up to us and told us like what a lot of what our choices were. And like, he did give mm-hmm. his recommendations, but mm-hmm. also said that like, some of this is up to you. Like some of the course of what you want to do is, is up to you and it has to be up to you. And also like very bracing to have him say, and ultimately it's Lincoln's choice because he's an adult man. And well, that's what's crazy. Yeah. yeah for you. That's wild. And mom and well, dad, it can, was also wild when, he said to me, it's my choice. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm an adult yeah. woman. And I'm like, but I don't, and I'm not ready for this. <laughs> designation, designation. And that like people can I advise actually, you, you know, mom and dad can advise your mom and dad could advise, but they can't tell you what to do. But I think that, you know, this is something that I, I don't know when I might've said it, like, I don't know. It was in, in reference to some other situation, but I said like, we're all trying to decide what is the most best thing to do right now. 
You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's not perfect, but what is the most best choice mm-hmm. that we could make? And, you know, sometimes there's a ticking clock on that. And sometimes there's, you know, just a million factors that play into it. And it's very nerve wracking. So, yeah. you know, especially when it's <laughs> your body and you know that you're just like, you know, kind of oh, sentencing yourself to, um, you know, to like a time to, there's going to be a little bit of a, a recovery time. And, you know, so you just have to choose the most best thing. But what is that? No one can say except for you. No one can say. And by the way, Truly you can't really know, shock. like you can make a call, oh. you can make a you judgment, can't. but in the end, like that, you know, the, how many people have you known that are like, Oh, I really regret not getting that surgery compared to how many people are like, oh, shit, mm-hmm. I wish I didn't get that surgery. You know, you just don't know how it's going to go. You just don't. And so it's like yeah. a certain amount of like a leap of faith. And it's really, you know, it's a big decision. It is. It's a big decision. But maybe you can I get the, I... maybe you can get the tattoo while you're unconscious for your knee. Why? Why would I waste the <laughs> fun? <laughs> I will have always thought that I'm like, when you are knocked out for like a surgery, I would love it if they would come in and like microblade your eyebrows. Well, that seems doable. <laughs> I actually think. I just, just like anything, like a dental procedure, just tack it on. I know there's like logistics involved, but you pay a lot of I mean, money. Is it true? Listen, I don't know if it's true or if it's not true, <laughs> but I feel like I've heard for many years that in Brazil, that in Brazil, women like go in for C-sections. Yeah. And get uh, like tummy tucks immediately. Oh, I think I've heard that too, that people get, just get the, like they get it all <clears throat> tightened up all at one time. I don't know if it's true. That seems- really intense it seems really intense but also like i don't know i'm not a doctor if there's any surgeons listening um or obgyns or whatever definitely weigh in because i'm curious if it's like something that you're intending to do anyway either way like is it i think that that much more traumatic to just bang it out it is it no it's it's traumatic i think it's i'm gonna say this I, you 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 shouldn't try to just like get more bang for your buck. You know what I mean when it comes to surgery. That's here's all, that's here's all. what Casey. I will say. I, it's not. Here's what I'll not, say. I've you're had, not looking for the bargain. You know. <laughs> no, I think it's more about like why are you going to go in there two times? You know what I mean? It's not like a bargain. It's just like I've had two C sections and like it's just mm-hmm. like it's like if you took that section of your body and sent it to Brazil. Like I did not feel anything from my un- just under my boobs to my knees for a really long time. Like even after mm-hmm. like there were there were for me there were years where I just couldn't feel someone like touching my stomach like the actual oh flesh yeah, yeah of my stomach. Was. Yeah. So and where it was cut or whatever. Yeah, even pretty far mm-hmm. from like where the scar was for me, I still d- like I just mm-hmm. You know, Eli and Lincoln are about to both be in their 20s. And I think I just resumed like having feeling for my full torso like a year ago or something. Oh, my God. I'm not even kidding you. (laughs) I'm not even kidding you. And I don't think I still feel stuff the way that I used to. So who knows? It's traumatic is what I'm saying. Like it's physically traumatic. So if you're going to do an additionally physically traumatic thing, I wonder if it's just like, oh, might as well. Or if it's like, no, that's insane. I don't think so because I think that's, yeah, because I think it's like, oh, it's it's too much for your body. Your body goes into shock. Yeah, that's maybe. The, that's the problem. You don't want your body to go into shock. Yeah. You, I mean, if you're, you're like, essentially what surgery is, is injuring yourself. Yes. A, you know what I'm saying? So a like, lot right? in some cases. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you don't, what you don't want is to like injure yourself too much. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I'm I'm not a big surgery fan because I'm really sensitive to anesthesia. Um and so I have a really hard time waking up from anesthesia and I have a like a ton of reactions to like morphine. So I I am such a scaredy cat and I will like uh, um avoid surgery at all costs. Like it really I'll do anything to avoid surgery. 
Yeah. Well, no, I don't understand people who like are down for surgery. I mean, I don't know many people who like are like, oh yeah, no problem with it. Yeah. I know a few people that are like make jokes about like, give me all the drugs, but like, I don't know. Those drugs make my stomach hurt. It's just all bad. Like it's not, there's, (laughs) there's no part for me that feels enjoyable or uh, like a thing I would want to sign up for. Anyway, so that's the we'll saga. See. But then also I did start to feel better a bit. And like after I saw those doctors and I went back and started working out. Mm-hmm. Um, and that made me feel so much better. Oh, good. Obviously. Good. Yeah. And then I was like, because then part of me was like, fuck it. If I have to get my knee surgery, no matter what, I have to get this knee surgery. So may as well just like go for it and keep working out. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. It's not like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not like, like, it, I don't know. I just felt like feels, feel, it made sense to me. So now, yeah. I'm, now I'm back on my workout train, which is good, but it, it was weird and kind of hard and still struggling, obviously, clearly with body ish issues but yeah it's also hard to like I just it just don't like it just I feel so weird like because (laughs) because I I don't know whatever (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but so that's your you're just thinking it over yeah now you're just thinking it over I think yeah I think I don't know I think I don't I think I don't know. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And I also think it might not be like truly the moment for me to have any searcher. Yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that good? You need I'm Mr. Serious. Miyagi, like, I, like whatever he could do in the Karate Kid when he just fixed. Was it Daniel's knee that got fucked up when he just like touched him? That was, don't you wish that could really be true? I don't know. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I do. <laughs> of course. But I also feel like I, I also feel like there is part of it. Oh my God. And I know, well, I didn't know like that Louis K was so con had so many like weird controversial thoughts and things. Um, you know, Louis K, the oh, woman, the body. Yes. Yes. Body is connected yeah. to the brain thing. Yeah. But I didn't realize how controversial she was. And then somebody like posted it on after I had like talked about Louise Hay last time and then I researched it and then I was like, oh fuck. Yeah, no, maybe she's not the greatest. <laughs> um so apologize for that. Normally like we do really are like fairly diligent in our deep dives on people, but well, Louise was also just somebody that I like barely knew anything about but was like, who's that person that's like it's all related to your brain? Whatever. Right. Well people really do <sighs> recommend that book. Um, a lot. I know, so, but some of her shit is has been like, like it's like ableist and okay. So this um, is this is good to know. This is good, good to, know. to know. Yeah, but ableist and also that like, um, yeah, I think she had some bad thoughts about certain things. Yeah, okay. But well, I don't know. I'm not an expert on Louise Hay. Right. However, somebody said something to me about my knee when I was in LA and they're like, did you do the Louise Hay affirmation? And I was like, Oh my God. Hilarious. What is the Louise Hay knee affirmation? Are you ready for what it is? <laughs> what? When your knee hurts. What? You say, I move forward with ease. I move forward with ease. And so then I went, I started doing that. Like when my knee would hurt, I started saying that. Yeah. And, did and it then work? I thought, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Oh my gosh! It did. Yeah. All, well, as they say, all your faves are problematic. So all we can know is what we know about Louise this week, and that she, uh, you know, apparently said some problematic shit. And uh, so take it with a grain of salt. Like, yeah. But yes. Well, so I'm not qualifying or whatever. I'm just saying. Anyway. So. I move forward with these, trying to work out. I don't know what if I should get rid of all my clothes that I don't fit into. 
There, that's it, guys. That's it. That's all I know. Fuck, I went down there for a hanger. I didn't get it. Okay. You didn't get a I'm hanger. Well, well what are you doing your best at this week? You got a whole lot of things to be doing your best yeah, at. Yeah. I yeah, and I'm doing I'm doing well. Uh ish. Yeah. I would say. I would say I'm doing okay. I'm doing all right. Yeah. I mean, look I'm doing my best. for somebody that didn't know you <sighs> were moving into that house yesterday at all. It looks like you got a lot done. Yeah, well, Bird and I stayed at Casa Kismet last night. Still living my teen dream over there with the kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are really just roomies. Right. Um, but I'm do- I guess I'm doing my best at, like, yeah. I, I, uh, I am trying to continue my path of being easy a little bit. Yeah. And be generous. Yeah. With myself. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that. I get that. I get that. I really, really fucking killed this room. I did such a good job here. I did. That's good. That's good. You're you're doing it. Gonna hate it, you know. But that's all right. That's not on you. No, because if they had wanted it done differently, they could have done it. Right. But they didn't. Exactly. So, so they're going to, it's going to be the way I did it. Yeah. There mm-hmm. you go. What are you doing your best at? I am doing my best at, well, just, you know, I kind of, I've complained about this. Complain isn't the right word, but just expressed that like sometimes it just gets lonely, you know, when you're not Mm -hmm. on like a regular and I'm sure you feel this sometimes too. Like even though you're with your family and everything, like there are just times when you're all like ships passing in the night and, Mm -hmm. you know, probably not so much for you. You'll know this more when you're, when your kids are older and they're doing Mm -hmm. their own thing. And so when I was feeling like that last Last time, last week, I really just did like reach out um, to people, which is not typically, I have like a weird thing, like a weird phobia Mm -hmm. of reaching out to people. Like, I feel like, who am I to reach out to this person? And like, I get that. Mm -hmm. So I always wait for people to reach out to me because then I can know for sure that they want to hear from me. And so, um, so I just reached. Yeah, I don't, I wish that more people would just not do that. Though. I know. Cause I feel like, I feel like that is hard, especially like if you're, I'm like always a reacher. Yeah. You know? Yes. And it's and unfair. I feel bad about myself. Yeah. Like I'm like, how come I'm the one that's always reaching? Yes. You I know? know. I know it is unfair because it does make the other person feel, I'm sure like they have to do all of the work, but mm-hmm. I am in a lot of situations where like the people in my life are so busy and the, this is also probably like a factor of like my upbringing or whatever, but I have only, you know, it's been my experience to only take up so much room in someone's life and to only ever be mm. convenient. And, mm, you know, mm, mm, yeah, so yeah. anyway, well, yes, I went, we can dig into that. Too, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Sure, so sure. I went against every fiber of my being when I was feeling kind of like, Oh shit. Like I just have like this really, empty stretch in front of me where Mm -hmm. like my husband's going to be working. My kids are busy. And, um, so just like reached out to a couple friends and wound up like being invited to breakfast with one friend who I see a lot and one friend who I hadn't seen in a long time. And it was so super fun. Actually, it was Janie, our friend who we talked about earlier. Janie had a Tompkins and, um, our friend Samantha McIntyre, who's a TV writer, and it was so good to see them and hang out. And I was like, "Oh yeah, like I'm not an intrusion." Like I didn't, I didn't like text her and say like, "Hey, are you doing anything sometime that I can glom onto?" I just texted her and said like, "Hey, I'm thinking about you. I'm missing you." And um, she was like, "Oh, I'm going to breakfast with Samantha." Like come. So I did that and I felt happy about that. And also I just have been thinking about this idea that I wanted to try. I don't want to say what it is and it's not a big idea. Uh, uh, It's not a, it's not a big deal idea. It's not like a billion dollar idea or whatever, but I was thinking about this idea that I wanted to try 
And um, mm-hmm. I texted Summer, who makes our merch for Brave Gowns. Mm-hmm. And I was mm-hmm. like, hey, I have this idea of something that I think could be good. Like something yeah. that I think could be good, you know, that people would like it. And she was cool. like... Oh I my, know about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was like, Guys, oh my God. Just so you know, I know about this. You know about this. I don't <laughs> want to say what it is, but also I'm not trying to act like it's it's not a nuclear secret or whatever. But so anyway, um, Summer know, was you're like... Gonna, you're going to wait until it's like Yeah, finished. until it's like done and yeah, I can I show it. people. Yeah, but so that. anyway, Summer is like kind of an inventor herself. That's like how she first mm-hmm. got into business. And so she was like, oh, can you like make like, even if it's really terrible can you make a prototype of what you're talking about so i can see what you're talking about so like i put together this thing like a little prototype of this item Mm -hmm. a couple different items actually because i was like working on them all simultaneously and Mm -hmm. she was like i think this is a really good idea i think we should try to do that so we've been working on that a little bit and she's so she's so fun and aaron who works with summer is like you know she's really the one that will tell you like oh this is how you do this or whatever. She's super smart about mm-hmm. stuff like that. But it's really fun because, you know, so m- one of my favorite parts of this podcast is when we have like talked to entrepreneurs, like women entrepreneurs who are leading businesses and stuff like that. And I just think it's really fun. And I don't necessarily think that I want to like make that change in my life where I'm like a businesswoman, but it's fun to like try to run with an idea and see. What are you talking about? My entire life, I've only wanted to be a business. You know <laughs> well, I mean, we are you know business. That. We are business we women are business in a women. way, but you what know, you mean in a way, no, but you know what I mean? Like, don't, I'm not, don't take this away from me. I'm not trying this to like, all I have. I'm not trying to be like the scrub yeah, daddy <laughs> guy, you know, who's scrub daddy. What's you that? Scrub Daddy is like this thing that was like on Shark Tank and it's like so popular. Yeah. It's like a kitchen cleaning tool or it's it's a it's a type of sponge that's very impressive and it's a very impressive invention and a scientific I- achievement in the world of kitchen sponges and uh it's all over TikTok and people love Scrub Daddy. And I think he just went from being like a regular oh, he has, guy. It's like a smiley face. A I smiley face. Yes. I know what you're talking I'm about. Not, yeah. I'm not uh-huh. trying to, you know, I'm not trying to have a scrub Still daddy scrub daddy's type thunder. phenomenon on my hands. But <laughs> I do think the thing is like a good idea. And I think people would like it because it's like, it's something that I, it, it's based on something that I've been doing myself for years. And so, um, so anyway, it's just fun. And that is like a cool thing because it takes a little bit of courage to tell someone like, oh, I have this kind of like wacky idea that I think could be like a an improvement on something we all need. And so I'm so grateful to Summer that she's like, yeah, let's do it. It seems fun. <laughs> like, let's see what happens. And I love a let's see what happens love person. That. Yeah. So Me that's too. what I've been up to. I, all I want is like a person who's like, yeah, let's try. <laughs> exactly. You exactly. Know? That's why you and I are friends though, maybe. Yeah. Because we're just like we do that for one another. Yeah. I always am like, yeah, why don't we try? And you (laughs) definitely are like, yeah, sure. Let's try. Yeah. That's all I want to do. I mean, like, especially at this juncture, you know, because I'm like, Mm -hmm. that's another thing that I've been doing my best at is just being like, you know what, even though I could use the money and, you know, and I am not necessarily working right now, I don't mm-hmm. need to do this thing that you're asking me to do. And I f- can already feel that it might be something that I would regret saying yes to. So I'm going to say no. And that's like something that I would never have done in the past. Mm. I think that saying no is definitely important. Um, well, that's great. Yeah. I'm excited about that. You know, just. I just, really am. hmm just mm-hmm. trying to do the things that like emotionally healthy and successful people do every day of their lives. That's like, that's okay. all we can aspire to, you know? Yeah. You know, you know, those people or. No, the, I've never, I've idea. never met one no, single I don't person. I, that. <laughs> I, I truly do not. So. <laughs> because, because the so truth what? is if they're Seems being, fun. if they're being super productive for the most part, most people I know that are being super productive. If you ask yeah. them, like if you took someone who's really successful and just prolific and productive and they seem like they're just Mm -hmm. killing it in all the areas that you wish you were killing it in. If you Mm -hmm. ask them, I think they'd say that they are sacrificing hugely in other areas that they wish they could improve in. So, you know, it's never, 
it you you cannot have your cake and eat it too. You I mean, always get what you want. Yeah, but you can't always. Sometimes. You get what you need. Maybe. Yeah. But sometimes not that. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes <laughs> not even that. But sometimes you can also have a little bit of someone else's cake. That's what I learned this week. Why, why does... Okay, this is just, 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 just a sidebar for two seconds. Yeah. Bernie is so funny because for so many reasons. But like, you know, I think that like there's a part of Bertie that just is like, oh, you're my mom, you know? Yes. And then I'm here, like, organizing this room. And, like, the amount of crystals that this kid <laughs> has somehow managed to procure yeah, is staggering. <laughs> like, it's, like, more crystal. I mean, they are so my child in so, you know, like, right. in many, many ways. Right. But, like, if they ever say to me, like, I don't want to be anything, like, whatever. Yeah. And, like, I just will be like, your actions say differently. <laughs> <laughs> like, you lean in so hard. Right. All of the things that I love. And it's really cute. And it makes me, like, kind of happy, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm glad you have those things to... uh to like observe about your kid because about the bird yeah because i mean you know it is it is just the little things you know when you have a kid that age it's just the little things where you're like this will sustain me through any troubling times oh my god (laughs) ain't that the truth (laughs) um do we have anything else? I haven't been paying attention. Like, again, it was trans day of visibility yesterday. I didn't post anything because the move. I forgot, which makes it, now I feel bad. Well, I, but know, also should've. every day is trans visibility day. That's true. You know, and. That's true. I agree with that, by the way. And yeah. so, like, your support Definitely. isn't a one day a year thing. Well, and it never. Clearly not. Yes. So, you know, so let's not. It's not. I know, but there's just such like a thing happening in our country right now. It's. I want to also like. I, I do want to have um, this woman come talk to us. She, I met her through Michelle because, in the last la, oh, well, might be time for me to stop talking. <laughs> in the last election cycle, yeah, she did this she did this thing where uh, she got people to like sort of band together to raise money to flip seats. Yeah. Remember I did that fundraiser with Michelle? Yeah. Do you remember? Anyway, she reached out to me cause like they're back at it and you know, Arizona's a big deal. Yeah. So they're passing a lot of bullshit stuff, you know, you're not kidding. Yeah. And, uh, my former home state. Uh, and so she was like, you know, she's a, she loves the pod and she's like, I'd love to like be able to like explain the ways that we like make real substantive change. And we have seen it work, yeah. you know, and it is really cool. So I feel like we should chat with her and see, you know. Yeah, let's do it. Because maybe people will be inspired. Yes. People definitely have. People have been writing all kinds of things. And just like, you know, we talked about like doing postcard campaigns and and text banking and phone banking. So thank you to everyone that has taken time to do that. Because that is just yeah. how we, you know, that's really, that's the real work, you know. That's oh my the, God, that's it is. The real, Boy, is it. The real work and... Like, mm-hmm. I hope you feel so proud if you have done any of that lately because it's just how things get done. It's the most meaningful work in these situations. Um, yeah. I mean, it all is real work and it really counts. And and we all have to, like, do it, 
is the thing. Yeah. Whether we want to or not, you know? Yeah. Um, all right. I'm going to like continue on here on my journey. Okay. Trying to make this all happen here. You're doing and it. And I really am. I really am. I really am. <laughs> well, we love uh, you and we'll be back yeah, to you our. Have the greatest weekend. Yeah. Have a great yeah. weekend. And this is not an April Fool joke. This will. This well, is real. Is. This we'll is a real yeah. episode. So oh, it is a real episode. Hopefully you weren't three tri- hours, but yeah. <laughs> hopefully you weren't tricked by it showing up in your in your um inbox or whatever on your app. But we love you and uh we we'll, love you. we'll be back to like normal things next week. Maybe. Okay. As normal um, as can be expected. Yes, I'm definitely gonna put that in my calendar. Um <laughs> all right. I'll talk to you later. Talk I love to you, you later. Bye. 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 Oh, no.